Hello and good morning. It's Phil and Heather and we are at a totally new location for us to attempt to find birds. And we're here because Heather has seen some birds here on what? It's the Audubon app, eBird. So Heather's been looking on eBird and people have been reporting sightings of some interesting birds here in this location. We're somewhere on Lookout Mountain, which is kind of famous for Rock City. You may have heard of that. But anyway, so we're going to uh, look around here and try really hard to find something. And if we do, we'll show it to you. This little road is like one lane wide. It's kind of like an access road to, to work on power lines. And we came all the way to the end of it, which is directly under the power lines, which you may or may not be able to see. And we finally got a bird. We got a, a white eyed vireo that was kind of over here in these trees. And uh, we both shot a few buffers full, so maybe we'll have a picture or two to show you. Here is the wide-eyed vireo. This one has some prey in its mouth, and it was shaking it around, and when it was shaking it, it was really blurry. I was shooting at 1 125th of a second, and then it swallowed that thing whole. And, you know, the, the wide-eyed vireo is kind of maybe our official bird of this summer. We had never gotten a photograph of it, either one of us, and now we've gotten a photograph of several of them. Here are Heather's photographs, and hers will say Heather Boy down at the bottom right, and mine will have nothing at the bottom right. And Heather got some nice photographs of the white-eyed Vireo as well here at Heather's new location that I'm very thankful that she found. We found an eastern tohi, and we were uh, making a lot of pictures of it. Matter of fact, it's still up there on the uh, power line or telephone line, whatever kind of line this is. And we're pointing our cameras up, and a lot of times I like to have the, uh, the loose and tight ring, or what's it called, uh, smooth, and smooth or tight ring towards smooth because you can zoom really fast and easy. But pointing straight up, sometimes the, the lens will creep and give you less than 500 millimeters. So Heather and I both have them on tight. That way it stays at 500. And if we want less than 500, we can still adjust it, but it doesn't creep on us. Let's look at that towhee. Here is my eastern towhee photo. This is a male eastern towhee, and I was at 1 125th again. And Heather's at the same shutter speed. She got lots of photographs of this beautiful male eastern towhee. We're really fond of these. We, I wish we would find some females more often. The females in the area where this male is black, they're kind of a chocolatey brown. But they uh, are very beautiful, just like these male eastern towhees. And Heather got quite a few photographs that she was happy with of the eastern towhee there on that telephone line. Heather's location is turning out to be pretty good. We just got a brown thrasher, the state bird of Georgia. And we also got a wood thrush, which is very cool because we haven't photographed those very much, either one of us. Here is my photo of the brown thrasher with its beautiful yellow eyes and speckled breast. The brown thrasher, and here's Heather's photos, the brown thrasher is by far the largest bird we photographed today. And we love to see these birds. Sometimes we see them at home in our yard, but Heather got a lot of photographs of the beautiful brown thrasher with its amazing bright yellow eyes. And then a similar bird in terms of its breast colors is this wood thrush and I, this is my wood thrush photo and heather got some a little later we left uh, heather's new location that she found for us and we went to a place about a block away and didn't have much luck and then we came back and we saw the wood thrush again and heather got a shot of it last time i thought she did but she didn't and heather said uh what'd you say it's my first wood thrush. So it's a lifer for Heather today on the wood thrush. I think I had gotten one of those before. Here is my photograph of the wood thrush. And this one's at 6400 ISO. And I really don't like to go above 1600 on the R7. And here is Heather's first ever wood thrush photograph that she shared. She's got a little foreground bokeh, but she was still really happy to photograph this bird. And this one's got a little foreground bokeh too, but it's not blocking the bird. Just a beautiful little wood thrush. We were happy to photograph. We kept on working here at Heather's new location, and we saw a Carolina wren, uh, several Carolina wren. And we also saw a uh, what we think is a juvenile indigo bunting. And we got a pretty good shot of it. I mean, it was just really close. And uh, in electronic shutter, we've learned that you can go with an even lower shutter speed because there's no shutter shock at all on electronic shutter. 
and it's you know of course the the lens is slow it's a 7.1 lens and uh the camera doesn't do well at high iso so i'm shooting at 180th right now to uh, to try to to keep the iso down but the 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 ibis and the is in the lens and the electronic shutter all combined to make that kind of possible here is a Carolina Wren photograph that I made at 180th of a second, and I was able to get away with 180th a little bit, but I don't recommend it. And here is what we think is a juvenile male indigo bunting. 180th of a second, the camera does fine with it and the lens does fine with it, but it's hard to get the bird to not move at all to where 180th will work. So I really recommend a little bit faster than 180th if you can help it. I got a lifer just now, an American Red Start, so that was pretty cool. Let's take a look. Really small in the frame, and I only was able to, to uh, get it in the frame for just a second or so. So, But anyway, let's look. I was really thrilled to get a photograph of this beautiful American Red Start. Like I said, it's the very first time I've ever seen or photographed one. I've seen photographs that my friends have gotten of these, and I've seen them in magazines and websites, but I've never seen or photograph one myself, so it was really thrilling to photograph the American Red Start there at Heather's new location for birding. After that, Heather got uh, another brown thrasher, and we got some um, Carolina wren, I think. I got a picture of a wren that I'm not even sure what species it is. It's probably Carolina, and uh, I think Heather got a blue-gray gnat catcher. This is Heather's brown thrasher photograph, and while she was making this, I had kind of walked down the road a little bit, and I was working on a photograph of this, and it turns out this is a house wren, and it's only the second time I've ever photographed a house wren, so that was really cool that it turned out to be a house wren. And this is my photograph of a Carolina wren. This was more back down towards the car where Heather was. Kind of a beautiful specimen, that one. And this is a juvenile indigo bunting. We think it might be a female this one and Heather was the only one of us that got these blue gray gnat catcher photos just an absolutely beautiful bird and she did a fantastic job look at this photograph this may be the best photograph of the whole day and we saved it for last of this blue gray gnat catcher well you found a pretty good spot didn't you miss Heather mm -hmm. did you get some skeeter bites all of the skeeto bites I got lots of skeeter bites too we had a good morning here at the new location that Heather found. I'm sure we will be back. And uh, we appreciate you joining us. We use the R7 and the 100 to 500 for everything today. I'm not sure if I told you that. So anyway, thanks for coming along. If you liked it, uh, a thumbs up is always appreciated. And uh, subscribe. What else should they do? I always hit the bell. Oh, hit the bell. Good. And then um, what else? Should I say something else? Subscribe, hit the bell. And we look forward to seeing you in the next one. Yeah. Bye-bye.